Hey guys, Teresa here. Welcome back to my channel, Lost My Thread. Today I'm going to be catching you up with everything I made in the month of May. As I generally do with these videos, I will be starting with what I've actually finished. I will then talk about works in progress, give a brief general life update, and then an update on my 24 for 2024 goals. I will also have chapters down below if you wanna skip around, skip ahead to projects that you're particularly interested in. I'm gonna start with the garments that I finished. If you watch the video where I was talking through my goals for Me Made May, one of the things that I really wanted to do was to try and work through my fabric scraps. I have too many fabric scraps like many of us do. I gave myself the goal of trying to cut my fabric scraps down by half, which I didn't do. I didn't really think I was gonna do, but I wanted to give myself an ambitious goal. I will say I made quite a few things using fabric scraps and that was all that I allowed myself to sew in the month of May. I am excited with what I finished, but more importantly, I have plans for so many of my fabric scraps. So I pulled out scraps, paired them with other fabrics or paired them together, came up with ideas of things I wanted to make with them. And honestly, I feel like that is half the battle. Now that I have them stacked up with a label of what I'm planning to do with them, I feel like I can just gradually chip away at those and that's how I'm gonna get through my scraps. I know that that will also create some new scraps, but it feels good that I only have a small selection of scraps that don't have an allocated project. And even if I haven't managed to do that many of them, I know that I will. The first one I will talk about is what I'm wearing now, which is maybe my favorite. I kind of had two favorites, I can't really pick, but this is definitely one of my favorite things that I made this month. This is the La Brea Tea by Half Moon Atelier. This is a woven top pattern. You can also make it in jersey or knits, but I made it in wovens, and this is a top that I've made so many times. If you've been following me for any length of time, you will have heard me talk about this pattern because I really do love it. It comes in multiple bust cup sizes, has a pretty good size range. I also just really like the shape for me. It is just a really simple make as well. There's just a front piece, a back piece, and then there's neck binding and armhole binding. I really do find it comes together fast and I'm always really satisfied. It's just an easy way to show off some fabrics as well because there's no bust start, it's just really simple lines. And I felt like it would work really well for my fabric scrap projects that I had. The idea with this one is that I basically had this scrap left over this top section from a bag that I had made. I made it as part of the Bestie Bag by BF Patterns. It was a Christmas gift for one of my coworkers. This was the lining on the inside. It is a Narita Hansen fabric. It's super fun. I love the colors on here. This bright blue is so beautiful and it has all these little characters all over it. It's a really fun fabric and I wanted to do what I could with it. It's a cotton lawn fabric and I was trying to pair together with different prints that I had. I felt like a solid would really just work really well. And I liked the idea of just using as much as I could on the top half and then whatever I couldn't fit onto the pattern piece I would use with another color on the bottom. So I literally just laid this fabric out. I folded it in half to see, okay, how far along the top of this pattern piece can I get? I folded the pattern piece up, added a little seam allowance on the bottom, cut it out, and then I kept that fold to then put down onto the bottom half, basically, this linen fabric that I used for the bottom. Again, added seam allowance on the top, traced around those pieces so that I knew that when I added my seam, it was gonna be the perfect size piece for the fabric. I am really pleased with how it came together. I was hoping to get this cool, look like a an intentional breakup of the pattern. I think it did work well. I will say this pattern is usually a bit longer, this top. I shortened it by about three inches at the length and shorten line just because I've made the longer version and wear it lows and it's good for tucking in. But because I'm wearing more higher waisted trousers and skirts, I felt like this length would be a little bit more appropriate for those. I think it worked really well. That's, I think, probably what I'm gonna go to is like my default these days just because of the style that I'm wearing. I honestly though I feel like the colors work great together as well so this bottom section is a linen fabric that I got from the fabric godmother this was not a previous project so it was one of the things that I bought myself to allow me to use my scraps so I, I thought if I was just going with only the scraps that I had I didn't really have anything particularly to work well with it but it's perfect and I feel like the silhouette is great the colors are really fun and I'm just so glad I was able to make the most of this fabric on the top section Next up is another La Brea tea. So this is scraps from three different projects. This floral print came from a matching set that I made. I'd made 
the Gilbert Top by Helen's Closet and the Pomona Pants by Anna Allen. Love that matching set, really do love this print. It's a viscose linen fabric. And then this green fabric is another viscose linen. It's a viscose linen noil fabric, viscose linen slub that I got from Sew Me Sunshine. Because it's both viscose linen, they have the exact same drape, the exact same movement, and it works really well to have these fabrics together. Now this one was definitely me trying to just piece together whatever I could to make a large enough piece of fabric to cut out the front piece and to cut out the back piece. So it's definitely very scrappy. The neckline and the armhole, I was really happy that I was able to use this up. So this is scraps from another matching set that I made. I made the Librea tee, the one that I've made here, <laughs> matching with a skirt, which is the peppermint pocket skirt designed by Paper Theory. And I love those two together. And when I was making the Librea tee portion, I don't know if you guys are the same, but whenever I'm making bias binding, if I'm making like strips to go around like a neckline, armhole, that kind of thing, I never know quite how much I need to make. They don't usually give you a, a measurement. Some pieces or some patterns give you a specific piece. This one doesn't, just gives you like, this is the width you need to make. Just make a load of bias binding. And I hate getting to the point where I run out of bias binding and don't have enough, that is the worst. So I always just make more than enough, I just make loads. And then I was making this project, I needed some binding and I wanted to use scraps, that was the whole point for me. And I thought, I wonder if I could get enough of the leftovers of this binding for the neckline and the armhole. And I did, and I barely had any leftover and it was so satisfying, I think the colors work really well together. I also put a label in here. This is from Intensely Distracted. This is a cotton label, so it's not scratchy at all. It's a woven cotton label. This is a top that generally you can tell the front and the back, but it is handy to have a little tag in the back just to remind you. What I like about this is because this is made from three different projects, I can theoretically pair it with all three of those projects as well. So I don't think I said the green skirt, it's another peppermint pocket skirt, so the same as the pink one. I feel like it works well with all those, but obviously I can wear it with a whole variety of other things as well. And I think it worked out well. It is a fun, clearly a scrappy looking top to me, but I think that's what makes it cool. Both with the top that I'm wearing and this top, I decided to top stitch. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, probably a little bit more easy to tell on sort of the, the greener areas. I decided to top stitch, I surged the inside. So it's exactly the same on the top that I'm wearing. I surged the inside edge and then I top stitched over the top just to keep everything nice and flat so that I didn't have those serger threads kind of pressing against me, rubbing in any uncomfortable ways. I feel like it just makes it look a little bit neater as well. And I'm really happy that I did that with both these. And I think it's a fun project. The next one I'm kind of on the fence about, to be honest with you, and that is this top. So this is the Ashton top by Helen's Closet with different fabrics on the front. So on the front, I've got this light floral foresty print. This is a cotton poplin, Liberty cotton poplin, and this is actually a scrap from the Bestie bag by BF Patterns that I made myself. This is the lining that I had. And then this pale blue, this is left over from a quilt that I made my niece. So we've got this lighter on the front and then the, the darker on the back. So this is a Rifle Paper Co cotton lawn fabric. I use this to line the Kelly Anorak. I made a quilted lining for my Kelly Anorak by Closet Core Patterns. I've been using the scraps, like I've been making the most of this fabric because I really do love it so, so much. This blue was left over from a shirt that I made, Harrison shirt by Cashmerette. This is a cotton poplin fabric. So I wanted, the idea I had with this one, it was a bit conceptual, was the front would be like daytime in the forest, the back would be nighttime in the forest. And I feel like, I like the concept. I do think it worked well, however, I just feel like the back needed more of this Rifle Paper Co. fabric. I just, I didn't have enough of it. I had what I had and I wanted to use it up. The front I feel like works a bit more effectively. However, I just, this is not actually a great color for me. It just washes me out a bit, the blue. But the bigger issue I have generally is with the fit of this top. This top has driven me a little bit crazy. I love the concept, I love the shape. It's got an A-line shape, so it has a bit of a bell vibe, especially when you make it in a more structured fabric like these are, it kind of hangs out. And when it's cropped, I feel like that's a super cute look with higher-waisted trousers, skirts, etc. And I wanted it to work, I really did. I made 
three muslins to get the fit right with this one. I'd actually made this top previously as refashions for other things that I made and I had to make three muslins to get what I was happy with then. But since then I've had some body changes and my measurements have changed and I thought, you know what, let me just start over, start from scratch and actually with my current measurements I now fit into the higher size band. So Helen's Closet is one of the pattern companies that has like a larger and smaller size band. The smaller size band has a B size sewing cup, so two inch difference between the high bust and the full bust. And then the larger size band has a four inch difference between the high bust and the full bust. I have a five inch difference between my high and full bust, but it was definitely closer. I had to do a full bust adjustment on my first version. And I thought maybe let's just start over with the bigger size band. Maybe it will fit my body in general better. Still took three muslins. I do feel like Helen's Closet patterns I really like them, but I need to do a lot of work to get them to fit me. And I still am not happy with this one. I do think it's still too tight across the high bust. I feel like my muslin fit me way better than this top did. It's super bunchy under the arms here in an annoying way. I think to some degree, it's just this fabric, there's extra bulk in the seams because I'm, you know, piecing things together. So maybe that's just maybe making it a bit more tight in the area, but maybe I should have sized up. I feel like I'm just not quite there with the fit of this top. And that really does let it down. Now, one thing I will say is because it is relatively tight in this area, I have a very hard time getting it on and off. Well, I can get it on, I just can't get it off. So I have had long-term issues with my shoulders where I have difficulties pulling things off over my head. And so it's often a bit of a kind of a shimmy shimmy dance to get them out. And if things are tighter here, I just really do struggle. This top, I would not, literally not have been able to take off had I not done something to get myself in and out. So I actually added a, an invisible zip in the side seam. The idea was that I was gonna put a button placket. So I know I have this issue with this top and I thought about, okay, how can I make it work? I can add button plackets in the side, I can add in the front, I can add in the back. And I intended to give myself enough space, extra fabric to make a button placket on the side. I forgot when I was cutting this pattern out. So that did not happen. And so I was a bit stuck and decided, okay, let's go invisible zip. I didn't wanna buy a new invisible zip because I'm using scraps, that's the whole thing. And I went through my zipper collection and I didn't have any blue. All the colors I had were contrast. I decided, all right, I'm just gonna go for a full on contrast and use red and it's just like, no guesses there. It was intentionally a contrast, so that's what I did. It was actually quite a long invisible zip as well because I didn't have anything that short that was the right length. So I ended up trimming it as well. I really don't mind that you can see the red zipper tab at the top. I think that's just kind of fun, but it is in invisible generally going down there. You can't really see it on the outside, but on the inside, I had to add a little bit of stitch there just to make sure that it doesn't open completely, but I only need to unzip to here anyway to be able to get it off. Um, but yeah, in general, I will say I'm happy with this concept, but I'm just not super happy with the outcome. I feel like this side probably would have been better for the front, but again, there's just not enough of this floral. So I felt like let's just keep that on the back and then I can have the big piece that works well for me on the front. And I think these colors are good for me. I think this is just not doing me any favors. The fit is just disappointing. So I'm not saying I'm not gonna wear it and I wanna play around with wearing it with different things. I feel like in theory, it's a very useful top to have in the summertime and I could wear it for work or I could wear it out. Watch this space. I'm hoping that I wear it but it's just not exactly what I envisioned. And the final garment to show you guys is another top. I've been on a bit of a top spree apparently. And that is this one, which is maybe my favorite as well. I'm so happy with how this one turned out. So this is the Uvita top by itch to sitch free sewing pattern for you guys if you are not familiar with it. It's a really nice, oversized t-shirt. So there's a drop sleeve. The sleeves are nice and loose. In general, it's just the right amount of oversize for me. I really love it. It comes in different sleeve lengths. I wanted to go with the long sleeve. This all came as a an idea that I had. I was inspired very much by something I'd seen on Pinterest, which is a knit top pattern that I think some of this fabric is actually printed to have stripes of color, but there's definitely some elements where they combine some different fabrics together to create that stripe effect. I thought it looked so cool and I felt like I actually had very similar colored scraps. So it seemed like a good way to use those scraps up to try and mimic that style. And I think it turned out so cool. I'm really, really happy with the outcome. Now I will say the process of making this one was probably the most time consuming of them all. 
Maybe it's tied with the wall hanging that I'm going to show you guys in a minute, but it really was a head scratcher of how to use up the scraps to the best of my abilities. So I had tons of scraps left over from a whole variety of t-shirts and things over the years. Some of this came from a Journey Raglan hoodie that I had made, and that was the lining that I had for that. A lot of these came from the Calypso color block t-shirts that I have made. Another one of these came from, oh, I can't remember, there's a square neck t-shirt by Itch to Stitch that I also made with one of these fabrics. So these were all literally made from scraps and a lot of them were quite peculiar size so they weren't necessarily the whole width of the fabric. It was just bits that I had left over. So what I did was I would take a rectangle of fabric that I had, lay it out on the floor and figure out how wide was the piece. You know, I'd look stretch wise to make sure I was gonna be able to stretch where I needed it to stretch measured that with a tape measure and figured out, okay, if I need to have a front piece, a back piece, and two sleeves, how many times this length do I need to have? So they, I did have some seams going across so in some areas. There are seams to be able to make it fit across, actually not many seams, I'm just looking. Yeah, I do have a couple. So there's a couple of places where I had to add a seam. But basically I would either fold the pieces like in quarters and I might lay the pattern pieces on top and see, yeah, okay, I can definitely get you know, the width of the front and the back, and then in this middle section, I can easily get the sleeves or whatever it may be, or I might need to piece some of those strips together to be able to get the front and the back and the sleeves. Anyway, probably really not making sense the way I'm explaining, but I figured out how many I could get from the width and then had to figure out based on the length that I had top to bottom, how wide those strips would be to be able to get what I needed. I spent a lot of time cutting out these fabric strips. I separated them out into right sleeve, left sleeve, front and back. And then I sat and sewed them all together. I did this all in the serger. I just stitched all those rows together to be able to get these big long strips of striped fabric. I then laid the pattern pieces on top, making sure to match. Generally it was the front underarm seam that I wanted to match to make sure that the sleeves and the side seams would all match together. And I think it came out so well. I love that when I straighten my arms, all the stripes line up beautifully. And I love that I did a decent job with the stripe matching. I wasn't 100%. I think I was pretty good on the side seams. I was a bit more careful trying to get these side seams to match up. But there were some areas of the sleeve where they weren't perfect. I mean, it probably looks better on camera, honestly. But yeah, I was, I was pretty happy with my stripe matching in general. I feel like... It's got that cool, relaxed look that I was hoping to get from it. It's really comfortable. That's the other thing is this one, I did not top stitch. So I've got all these serge seams on the inside and I was slightly worried that it would be uncomfortable to wear, but because it is a little bit loose, it doesn't really, I feel like it doesn't touch my body very much. I don't really mind the seams there. I don't really notice them. And I think it is just such a fun look. And I feel like it was a really satisfying in Pinterest board to finish product. I feel like it was a good dupe and I am satisfied with the end result. The last project to tell you about, I feel like is kind of halfway between being a finished project and a work in progress because I have finished it. I just need to figure out the binding and the backing. And that is a wall hanging that I have made. So I mentioned before, I had some ideas of some wall hangings that I wanted to make. This one was inspired by Bauhaus art. The idea is that I wanted to have geometric shapes, circles, squares, rectangles overlapping with some bold punchy colors. I had some fabrics that I picked out, generally mostly solids that I felt like would work really well together, very cohesive, and I feel like it came out so, so well. Being able to design the whole project from the beginning, just being my own ideas, it was so satisfying to make. I really did love this process and I am excited to make another wall hanging for sure. But the other one's gonna be a little more freeform, but it was really fun to do the planning. I will be making a video at some point just talking through my process of designing and creating this wall hanging if you want to do a similar thing with your scraps or even with some fresh fabrics if you really like the idea. But I am so happy with this. I'm not gonna be able to hold it up properly to show you guys because it's just too big. It's actually five foot by four foot. And I can show you some of the details though. I decided to top stitch and I changed color with my top stitching to try and keep it all nice and neat. I wanna keep this for a long time and I wanna be able to have it for years. So I decided to overlock the back as well. So it's all overlocked and then top stitched. Again, I 
change the color of my top stitching throughout so it's really nice and neat. I'm really pleased with how I got these curves. Some of it I had to piece together, two pieces to get enough of it, and I decided to top stitch over the top because I felt like this is made with scraps and I'm excited and proud and happy that it is, so I don't mind drawing attention to that by making those lines on there. In general, this came from a load of projects that I felt, felt like were similar enough fabrics that they would work well together and I think I picked the perfect ones. So three of these are actually from the same project. These three all here, this pink, green, and yellow all came from the Mercot puffer vest that I made. It's a cashmere club pattern. Really love that vest. It's not designed to be color blocked, but there are quilting lines I felt like were too perfect to not just use for color blocking. These are washed cotton fabrics that I got from Sew Me Sunshine. Love that vest, love these colors together. I also had this linen fabric. So this was left over from a peppermint wrap top that I made designed by In The Folds, free pattern for Peppermint Magazine. Really like that linen top. This is another linen. The stripe is a linen from Merchant and Mills. On here, it might not be as obvious, but if I show you the orange, I felt like the colors were just so good together. I felt like they just worked really well against these other fabrics. And this was a jumpsuit that I made. It's the jumpsuit from the Great British Sewing Bee Sustainable Style Book. Love that jumpsuit. This peachy orange color is actually linen that I got from Ray Stitch Fabrics that I have as curtains in my living room. So I know that this will work in my living room. I love just that little bit of movement and drape and bounce in these fabrics. It makes me really happy. And I do feel like all of them are really nice and cohesive together. The blue is maybe a slightly different shade of blue than I would have intentionally gone for, but it was my scraps and I feel like it worked really well. Like I said, I like the idea that some of these colors might kind of overlap to create a new color. So where there was a pink circle overlapping yellow circle, it created a peach in between. I know the colors are not perfect, but I feel like it's still giving the idea of what I wanted. So the idea here is that I can rotate this in all orientations. I can have it in different places. I'm really excited to get this up and on my wall. I'm hoping to do that pretty soon. And I feel like it is really just gonna bring a nice pop of color, a nice brightening up of these spaces in my home. Moving on then to general life update. The first thing I'll briefly go over is just anyone keeping tabs with my recovery with my hand and my wrist. I've been having problems with my ulnar nerve that have definitely not resolved. I feel like the last month things seem to have plateaued a bit, which is disappointing. I definitely know when I've been back at work and working full long days, I do feel more pain in my hand and my wrist, but it's not surprising. And I feel like at least on my days off, it's better. I was actually able to do a little bit more knitting in this last month than I was the previous month. So I think there is some very minute progress. I am seeing the consultant again next week, so we're just gonna have to see what they say. It may just be a watch and wait how things go, but it's still, I would say, stopping me from some activities, but I'm managing to adapt and still do most of what I wanna do, but these things are just such slow progress, unfortunately. I did also have a really good birthday week. I have a birthday at the beginning of May and I took a week off. I was hoping and expecting to have loads of sewing time, but as happens, when I was off, I ended up planning loads of things to do. So I was busy bee, but in a good way I was busy, you know, going out with friends and having like lunch and breakfast. I also had an afternoon tea with my mother and father-in-law up in Oxfordshire, which was so, so lovely. I went out for Mexican food with my husband to my favorite Mexican restaurant in London called Mestizo. They now have two branches, didn't know they had a new one in Kensington. So we spent today going to the Saatchi Gallery, one of my favorite art galleries, and then walked over to Mestizo to have a delicious meal, which was really fun. I am a huge fan of Mexican food, so it probably is my favorite restaurant in London in general. I've been there for birthdays in the past, and this is the first year that I told them that it was my birthday, because when it's your birthday, they go a little bit over the top after you finished your meal. They play some music, all the staff come out, they put a huge sombrero on your head, give you a shot, and then rattle your head around while they're all cheering and chanting while you're taking the shot. It is really funny, it is a good laugh, and I decided I'm gonna tell them it's my birthday this year because I'm gonna have a little fun with it. My husband took a photo of me with the sombrero, which I feel like is just a fantastic photo. I feel like most people I know have said it's now their favorite photo of me, which I 100% get. But it was generally, honestly, such a good time. I had a really great time over my birthday week. One of the highlights for sure was that my husband and I took a trip to Rye in the southeast of England, which is where Merchant & Mills is based. So Merchant & Mills is a UK-based 
fabric shop. They also have a lot of their own lines of fabric. I'm not sure if that's all they stock. Technically, they have some Indian block print fabrics. Are they all Merchant and Mills? I'm not quite sure. But I had a wonderful time. It's a really beautiful town. I got some amazing fabrics there. It was so cool to go there in person. I did actually make a video about my trip to Merchant and Mills, which will be coming next week, just to give you a little tour around. If you haven't been there, it's a beautiful shop. Highly recommend. And I can also show you the goodies that I picked up. And I think that ties in beautifully with updating on my goals for 24 for 2024. If you're not familiar with this idea, it's 24 things that I have put on a list that I would like to do this year. Some of them are sewing related, not all of them are sewing related. I'll put a link to the video if you didn't see me talking about it because it will make a little bit more sense. But I'm able to cross one of them off now and that is to take a trip to Merchant and Mills. So number five was to visit Merchant and Mills and I have officially gone there. Now, I also have been working towards other things. So I had my number one goal was to sew a quilt for myself. If you guys didn't catch last week, I shared a video of my plans for a quilt along for the Standing Tall Quilt by Helen's Closet. I'm doing a collaboration with Sarah of Sew Sarah Sewed and I am working towards that. So in July, I should have that quilt finished, which is very exciting. I have also been working through these haiku books. I have four of these books. This is the spring volume and I've been working through this in spring. I'm pretty close to the end so I'll probably be finishing that one pretty fast and then I can move on to the summer one. I'll pop in a couple of haiku down in the description box that I particularly liked from the month of May. I also did a pretty good job of going on regular walks, whatever the weather. My husband and I have been doing that and it's been a really nice thing for us to do on days off. Even if it's for a brief time, I feel like it's just so good for your mental health, but also good for your physical health to get outdoors. I forgot to mention in the month of April, we had this funny time where there was this wall. There was a woman who was walking past and she was really staring at this wall for a while. And I thought, what's, what's up with her? Like, is she, is she on a substance? Why is she so interested in this wall? When we got to the wall, I had a look and it was covered, and I mean covered in caterpillars. I've never seen so many in one place. I don't know why they were all flocking to this space. I'm sure they're all butterflies by now, but it was really interesting and cool. And I feel like it's the kind of thing where if you don't get outside, you don't see that stuff. And it has been really beautiful seeing all the blossoms coming, all the new flowers changing throughout the seasons the trees taking new life. It's so wonderful. I'm such a big fan of nature and being in nature. And it's been a really positive thing for both my husband and I to do. And that is my May. I feel like I made some seriously cool scrappy projects. I hope it was inspiring for you guys to maybe look at your fabric scraps in a little bit of a different way. I would love to know if you've been trying any fabric scrap busting projects, if you've made similar piece things, if you've made a wall hanging, or if maybe you were inspired to do so yourself. I feel like in general, it's just really satisfying and really nice to be able to work through those scraps and feel like you're actually making something from rubbish almost, from trash, things that were essentially going to be thrown away. It is ultra satisfying and I definitely want to be working more on those as the year goes on. Let me know what your favorite thing that I made this month was. I'm honestly probably leaning most toward the wall hanging and I think that's probably because it's just such a different project for me and I'm really proud of how it all came together but I don't know this top is really cool as well. The stripey top. Anyway Lots of fun things that I made. I would also love to hear what you've been up to in the month of May, whether you've been getting outdoors, getting out to see nature, what sewing projects you've been working on that you're particularly excited about. Definitely getting into that summer sewing vibe as well. So I'll be having a summer sewing plans video coming out soon. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure that you give me a thumbs up down below and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see upcoming videos. I'll be back and see you guys soon. Bye.